Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel of Conscious History, where we will unveil the hidden truths of the past. Aztec warriors are screaming and dancing as the Aztec priests ascend the Aztec temple, ready to start the sacrifice ritual. The gods fought to defeat the night and restore daylight, and they fought to connect the world of the heavens with the earthly world through rainfall. Therefore, offerings had to be exchanged for the future well-being of society as a whole. Intruders have stepped onto our lands. Our gods must have given us a warning of destruction and suffering to come. These intruders have brought sickness into our lands. They steal our trade and burn our temples. As the sacrifice ritual is completed, the warriors can feel the energy. They pick up their spears, bows and arrows, and just like they are gods, they will fight in the darkness to find light. In this video, we will dive into the Spanish Aztec War. A story of sacrifice, battle and the desire for power and control. If you enjoy our content, like and subscribe to our channel or support us on ConsciousHistory.BackMe.org and let's witness the rise of warriors and the clash of empires. When Christopher Columbus arrived in Guanaja, he sent his brother Bartholomew to explore the island. While Bartholomew explored the island with two boats, he noticed a large canoe from the west also heading to the island. In the canoe were 25 indigenous Mayan people. Curious about the visitors, he seized the ship and found out it was a trade canoe from Yucatan. On board were wealthy Mayans who had valuable goods with them. Ceramics, cotton textiles, yellowstone axes, cacao and slaves. He took everything that interested him from the cargo and captured the elderly Mayan captain to serve as an interpreter. This was the first recorded contact between Europeans and the Maya. The elderly Mayan captain was interrogated and his answers led to dreams and hopes. A story about a wealthy Aztec empire further west that was filled with gold. In 1518, Diego Velazquez, Spanish conquistador and first governor of Cuba, put Hernán Cortés in command of an expedition to explore and secure the interior of Mexico for colonization. At the last minute, because of an argument between the two, Velazquez changed his mind and revoked Cortés's permission. Cortés ignored the order and in an act of open mutiny went anyway in February 1519. He stopped in Trinidad, Cuba to hire more soldiers and horses and then landed on the Yucatan Peninsula in Maya territory. While heading towards the Aztec Empire, the Spanish conquistadors fought against many indigenous tribes. Many indigenous chieftains offered gold, food, clothing and slaves to their victors. In their culture, it was an honor to give their children from a high bloodline to their successors. Therefore, Hernán Cortés was introduced to a noblewoman who would not only change his life, but also that of the entire empire. Her name was Malintzin, also known as La Malinche. Malintzin, of course, needed to be baptized and was given the Christian name Marina. Through her noble lineage, Marina had the ability to speak both Maya and Nahuatl, which was gold in the hands of Hernán Cortés. She provided him with the opportunity to communicate with many indigenous tribes. 
en genaamd Cortés en his army were on their way to Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire. Initially, many indigenous tribes were hostile towards the Spanish, even though some had been at war with the Aztecs for centuries. However, their stance changed completely because of Marina. Marina could communicate with the indigenous people, discussing the strength and power of the Spanish army. This led to many warrior groups joining the conquistadors. While traveling, Marina heard rumors that indigenous warriors were plotting an attack to ambush the Spanish conquistadors in their sleep. Because of her loyalty and cleverness, she told Cortés, who counterstruck and completely annihilated the attack. Therefore, Marina completely changed the course of history. In November 1519, Hernán Cortés and his army reached the capital Tenochtitlan, where they were amazed by the city situated on an island connected by lakes but still hungry for gold. The Aztec Emperor Moticosuma II saw in Cortés the embodiment of what their gods must have sent for death and destruction. Therefore, he tried to persuade him with gifts, but the Spanish were captivated by a relentless craving for gold. After six days, they found a hidden, sealed wall filled with gold and jewels. Shortly after discovering this treasure, the Aztecs killed two Spanish messengers. This led Cortés to kidnap the Emperor and completely forbid the Aztecs from performing sacrifice rituals. During this period, Cortés left the capital to fight off another Spanish expedition sent by Governor Velázquez to arrest him because of his open mutiny. He left Tenochtitlan in the care of his most trusted lieutenant, marched to the coast, defeated the expedition and when he told the defeated soldiers about the riches of Tenochtitlan, they agreed to join him, eventually strengthening his army. While Cortés was fighting on the coast, his lieutenant was in control of the capital. The Aztecs were angered by their intruders, the fact that they had captured their emperor, and the fact that they could not honor their gods. Due to fear of an Aztec revolt, Cortés's lieutenant slaughtered many Aztec nobles and priests who were celebrating a ritual festival in the city's main temple. And when that happened, all hell broke loose. By the time Cortés returned to the capital, the tension was ready to explode. The Aztecs even appointed a new emperor, because weakness was seen as a failure. When Cortés ordered Moctezuma II to stop the riots, he was held accountable. They threw stones and spears at him, eventually killing the emperor. Now that the Emperor was dead, the bomb exploded. Because of the constant attacks, Cortés decided to leave the city at night. Cortés ordered his soldiers to carry as much gold as they could. During the night, the army was noticed by Aztec warriors and they sounded the alarm. This night would become known as La Noche Triste or the Night of Sorrows. This rainy night colored the water around the island red due to the bloody combat between the Spanish conquistadors and their indigenous allies fighting against the Aztecs as they attempted to escape the city. Some Spanish soldiers carried so much gold on their armor that when they fell into the lake they drowned due to the weight. One week later, the surviving Spanish and indigenous troops arrived at the plain of Otumba, where they encountered an enormous Aztec army. The Aztecs saw the Spaniards as already defeated and didn't charge right away. Instead, they wanted to capture them alive and sacrifice them to their gods. 
the Conquistadors succeeded in the Battle of Otumba because the Aztecs didn't charge right away and Cortes had a smart plan. The Aztecs weren't used to fighting cavalry charging at them. Cortes told his troops to mainly attack the warriors with fancy armor, feathered headdresses or flags who were the captains. By taking out these captains one by one, they weakened the spirit of the Aztec army. And that's eventually how the conquistadors won. With this victory, the Spanish conquistadors were able to reach the safe haven of Tlaxcala, regroup and gather their strength for a counter-attack. Because of the gold they had acquired and Marina's negotiation skills, in demonstrating the strength of the Spanish army to the indigenous tribes. They were able to reassemble and prepare to strike back at Tenochtitlan. While Cortes was rebuilding his army, the Aztec population saw a sign that their gods were angered at them. A smallpox epidemic brought by a Spanish slave struck the city creating death and destruction in the capital. This helped in the siege of Tenochtitlan. Cortes attacked Tenochtitlan with his army and 20,000 indigenous warriors who either joined him because of Marina or because they already had been at war with the Aztecs. Even though they faced more than a thousand canoes filled with warriors they advanced. During the siege of Tenochtitlan, Cortes cut off the island's supply lines for food and supplies, which slowly wore them down. With no new troops, supplies, food or water, and the constant sacrifice of Spanish soldiers was not helping, the Aztecs knew the darkness had overruled the light. In the end, the Spanish and indigenous tribes entered Tenochtitlan and seized the city. The Aztec forces were destroyed and the Aztecs surrendered on August 13, 1521. The Spanish seized the gold, while the indigenous allies mainly sought revenge due to the centuries of submission by the Aztecs. This led to the foundation of New Spain, with its capital Mexico City. However, it is said that the indigenous allies estimated at about 200,000 warriors over a three-year period were essential for this success. Although Cortes ignored the authority of Diego Velázquez, after his spectacular success, he returned home and was awarded the coat of arms by the King of Spain. Dona Marina, who had one child with Cortes, stayed in Mexico and married a conquistador. Cortes would have said that next to God, Marina was the most important reason for his success. For many indigenous people, she was seen as a hero who helped them be free from an oppressive empire. For others, she was seen as a traitor because she chose the side of the enemy. But for most, she was seen as a beacon of light because it was through her actions that Christianity was brought to the new world. What did you think of the Aztecs and their sacrifice rituals? Did you know of Cortes and Marina or the fact that many indigenous tribes joined the Spanish army to fight the Aztecs? Would you like us to dive deeper into this history? Leave me your answers below in the comments and if you like our content, like and subscribe to our channel or support us on ConsciousHistory.BackMe.Org. We love making in-depth history videos. See you next time at Conscious History.